Chiefs rust proofing. The Chiefs have just come out on the ice for a warm up period. They're about to try for their fifth consecutive win. They're getting a good round of applause from their own booster club who have traveled all the way from Charlestown to be here in Peterborough tonight. Need more energy throughout the day? Looking for a kick to your workout? RockinThatIDLife.com has you covered with delicious flavors you've grown to love in tropical fruit and mixed berry, but now fall in love with the new fruit punch and orange flavors. Try them all at RockinThatIDLife.com. Realtor Mike Burgoyne with Real Brokerage LLC makes the moving process easier. Work with a realtor who plays and studies the game and will work as hard as the boys on the ice to get you the best deal. Check out Mike on the web at strikewithmike.com and jumpstart your move today. That's strikewithmike.com. Welcome to episode 20 of season 12. This is episode number 429, all time of the often imitated, never duplicated, Peaches, 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 I love you. We're the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Let's go Blues Radio. Sorry, I just watched that movie tonight. Uh, special thanks to our sponsors, rockin'thatidlife.com, strikewithmike.com, and centericebrewery.com for proudly sponsoring the show. Please check them out. Also, don't forget to check out our t-shirt shop at letsgoblues.com for some well-designed and fairly priced blues-themed t-shirts. It's Thursday, September 21st, but you're watching... I'm sorry, this is terrible. It's Thursday, September 21st. We're streaming live on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. I had a note in there from last week uh, that I forgot to remove. Uh, to interact with the show on social media, our handle on all social channels is at LGB Radio. Just search for us and you'll find us. And if you haven't done already, already done so, please like, follow, subscribe, ring the bell, buy a t-shirt from our shop, buy a timeshare, and put stickers everywhere, especially the toilet, or do whatever you can do to help us out. I'm your host, Jeff Ponder, and I'm joined by Kirk Price and Bill Day. Producer Austin is sitting out tonight while we'll review the allegations against him. The agenda for tonight includes the Blues naming their 24th captain in history this past week as well as the prospects playing in a Minnesota tournament, the Blues extending offers to a few players for their currently ongoing training camp, all that and more on this enriching and tasteful episode of Let's Go Blues Radio. So again, I am joined here by Mr. Kurt Price and Mr. Bill Day. Uh, we are gearing up for the season. It preseason starts Saturday. Hockey season's almost here, guys. We almost made it. I, I, you know, I finally started to feel like the season was was uh, coming around um, when uh, they announced Shen as captain. I was watching the the press conference. I'm like, here we go. I for me mentally, that kind of started the season for me. Yeah, and I've you been, know what's funny is with that because I watched the I watched it while I was live, and I was thinking, and, and again, we'll we'll talk more about Shen in a bit, but like. I, uh, I, all summer I've been kind of like, yes, I've been excited for the hockey season, but I've been like, uh, it's going to be another rough year. We're watching the, the, the Cardinals right now have a rough year. We're like, it's going to be another rough year. I don't know. I, this is going to, but the minute that it was like actual, like here's a press conference about the upcoming season. I'm like, you know what? Even if they suck, it's still hockey season. That's still the best time of the year for me. I don't care. And, but it's like, and hearing the excitement in their voices, you know, like they're excited to get the season going. Braden Shen said some good things. It did make me say, like, you know what? Maybe they'll be better. Maybe they'll surprise me. We'll see. But still, it's here. Hockey season's here. I, I, this is an intriguing season for me because it's like a, I wouldn't say it's a crossroads. I would say it's a, it's just, you know, it's like now or never for this defense because there have been a couple of bad years. And it's like, and with a new, you know, defensive coach, uh, if they don't turn things around and improve the defensive play this season, then, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you do it because of the way that everyone's contracts are structured, but you've got to try and blow it up somehow. I mean, it's, it, this is, you, 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 you've tried everything, you know, Baruby's line, a uh, job is on the line this season, I think, um, so th this this is a this will be a very interesting season 
Um, you know, and who knows? Maybe Mike Weber can get the talent out of this defense that uh, that this defense was supposed to have. So, I mean, there's the, 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 I, I think I don't think many people would agree with me. This is, would disagree with me necessarily that uh, that this defense should be better than it is. Um, but they just have been very disappointing. That's probably the worst part of it is this defense is supposed to be a lot better than it is, and they've just fallen flat. So anyway. Well, and I, right. I don't think it's crazy to say that if the defense were to play the way that we thought they would when it was constructed, this could be a playoff team. And oh, you look at the, playoff you team. look at the yeah. roster and you say this could be a playoff team, but we just it's like a wait and see with the defense. Are they going to suck as bad as they were last year? Even <laughs> half as bad as they were last year, because then they're probably not a playoff team. Thanks. Right. It's we covered it a lot. And, you know, we totally vindicated when Van Ryan was let go. Uh, something that we talked about at length last season. And yeah, so the, the Weber hiring, if he can, if he can make the, the difference that's it's going to be huge but uh you know not to get too far ahead of ourselves but uh i thought it was interesting some of the comments in army's presser like almost like he had written off last season that the locker room was dead like some of the comments that he made it, were just like mm, they they have to they have zero equity now and they're building from scratch and it I don't know they it felt to me like there was some shade uh, going towards uh, departed players. Yeah, and I think there was some shade from Armstrong throughout the year last year too. I mean we we heard comments from him and Baruby about certain players not playing the way you expect, and I think we all thought that was talking about the defense in Cairo. Um, and so yeah, we've been hearing a lot of shade coming from management and coaching staff. So we'll see if that continues throughout the year. But uh, yeah, it, it was interesting. And yes, I agree. Listening to that press conference when it was going on, I'm like, Ooh, this sounds like Armstrong's kind of done with the guy. Like the, maybe there's a reason. And I'm not saying he was talking about O'Reilly, but maybe there was a reason O'Reilly didn't come back here. Maybe he was ready to, to turn the corner and turn the page. I think fans should be, there's a, it's a completely different mindset this season compared to last going in. Really, because I mean, the expectations last season from most people were this is a playoff team, mm -hmm. and and I don't think I mean it's like an, it's like a, this team could go either way this season. They could be bad again, um, or they could make the playoffs. I mean, it's just depending on how things fall with the defense, right? It, it's it all circles back to to the defense and how they play. That's 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 going to be the the stir that the straw that stirs this drink. The stir that straws the drink. The stir, the drink that stirs the straw. <laughs> All right. uh, a couple comments I want to get to real quick, and then we actually got some, some quick uh, announcements I want to get to at the top of the show here. Quickest I think we ever got into Hockey Talk, guys, in 429 episodes. <laughs> We're starving. <laughs> We're starving. Yeah, right. Uh, Matt Harris says, I'm honestly optimistic about the upcoming season. Lots of things can fall into place and click with no strategies and coaching. Uh, and then uh, David Miner adds, and I'm going to use his, uh, he has a, he had to add a correction and I'm glad he did because his original comment came off very silly. Uh, I'm more concerned with how we play than wins and losses. Originally he had and wins and losses. And I'm like, okay, so you're concerned with how we play and wins and losses. That's every single fan in the yeah. world, David, but I, no, the, the, yeah. the clarification helped. Thank you. I think, yeah. And I think that if they play well, the wins will come. You know, that's right. So if you if, if you're playing well, then your win should come. If you're not playing well, then, you know, the, the how you play is going to take care of your record. So, yep. Agree. Uh, so, again, we've got plenty of blues talk that we're going to get to here in a minute, guys. But we got a, a couple announcements I want to make. First of all, a huge congratulations goes to our friend of the show. Again, one of my favorite guests, if not my favorite guest. Uh, friend of the show, Amanda Levier. We talked uh, throughout the summer how the PHF disbanded. This new league, the PWHL, uh, was formed, and uh, we were concerned. You know what's going to happen with some of those PHF players? Uh, Amanda Levier, the winningest goalie ever in PHL. I'm sorry, PHF and uh, NWHL history. Yes, she gets to say that forever because those leagues are gone. Uh, she was drafted into the newly formed PWHL. She's even staying in Minnesota, uh, and she will be in tandem with a St. Louis connection. Uh, U.S. Women's National Team and former All-CHA first-team member 
while with Lindenwood University, Nicole Hensley. So if you watched any of the Olympics, you've heard that name, one of the best female goalies in the world right now. She will be in tandem with Amanda Levier. So that is very exciting, and I want to send a very, very heartfelt congrats to Lev and very happy that uh, we'll be seeing her play professional hockey still uh, when this league starts in January. They stream online, that league? Uh, they have not. I don't think they've announced that yet. I should know I'm on the press releases, but I know that there are plans to at yeah. least do what the PHF was doing and stream on ESPN plus, but okay. there might be even be some national TV games. Yeah. Leagues like that should, uh, just to get their product out there, you know, get yep. as many eyes as possible. Agree. So again, congrats Lev and uh man, you're going to have a fun time with Nicole Hensley. She's a hell of a goalie. So, uh looking forward to watching the Minnesota team unnamed right now, but uh we will be probably hearing that in the next couple of weeks. Minnesota. Uh, and I am working with the PWHL since she's in a new league. It's a little weird trying to get interviews. Lev says she's always happy to come on and talk. Uh so I'm working on getting her on a show here pretty soon. Uh but just need to work with the P- PWHL to make that a legit interview. Well, uh, it's a good thing she's not a. It's a good thing she's not a Blues assistant coach, because they are <laughs> prohibited from doing interviews. Did you know that? That's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course you knew that. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. It unless uh, weird Ruby doesn't want to do the post game presser, then yeah, he'll send one of them out. I guess. I guess it's a, a you know prohibited unless the team says otherwise. Th- that's weird to me uh, that that the assistant coaches can never do not even with a, a journalist in a newspaper. Yeah, they, they're not it's, allowed unless they get permission. They're not allowed to on their own. It's um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe that's across the NHL, but I've said before and I've heard that he is very, very relaxed now compared to even 10 years ago. Almost. Geez, it's almost been I guess it was eight years ago. I was in the uh, the media. But yeah, Wait, I know back. At, you're in the media. Yes, I know. I know what? I was in the media. Crazy. What? Um, How come you ever told us before? We could have used that to help promote the show. We could have, but we never did. Too bad. <laughs> Um, no, back. Yeah. Back in those days, Armstrong was very tight on everything. He, uh, I even heard he had a huge say in what was posted on social media, which is crazy to me. You're the GM of a hockey team. Why do you care what's posted? Yeah. But, quit trying to have your hands in every single bucket in the organization. Just do your right. job. Right. <laughs> but from what I hear, he, uh, he has relaxed a ton on that stuff, but still sounds like that is still, uh, something that kind of sucks about the blues, but Nonetheless, uh, we want a couple other St. Louis announcements that we will not announcements, but I guess just uh, things we want to mention at the top of the show here. Uh, congrats to St. Louis's adopted son, Adam Wainwright, on recording his 200th career win, only the third Cardinal all time to uh, to to do that. So very exciting. Kurt, you were at the game. I'm sure it was yeah. very, very cool to see. That was, you know, it, and it was touch and go there as far as whether or not he was going to get to 200 yeah because start of the season you're like he needs five was it five wins or whatever it was five six months yep and it's like he'll get it you know just a matter of time six months it's like and then i'll be damned he's only got a few he only has a few starts left <laughs> the season he hadn't gotten there yet but uh man pitched a gem and uh yeah i was uh amy and i were there um we bought tickets for that game before the season started you know they're those six dollar flash deal specials they have that come with six dollar cards cash on each ticket basically free tickets um, so we got that. We picked that date, and it happened to be the date that he got the 200th win. So that was really cool. Most uh, memorable game of the season, I think, in a, in a down, a very down year for the Cardinals. So yep, it was fun. It was a blast. We usually oh, we'll go was... to the game and we'll we'll kind of we'll sit in our seats for a little while, and then we'll or we'll move around or we'll, we'll lounge around about somewhere in the stadium and walk around, go to the bowtie bar, whatever. Uh, but we stayed in our seats the whole time. And watch the game because it was a it was a playoff like game, and the Cardinals played like it was a playoff type game, and it was just a really really good game to watch. Nice nice pitchers duel. Well, and honestly, for the most part, Wainwright has been pitching very well recently. Yes, for a the while last, like, there, it five was, six starts. Yeah, yeah. For a while there, it was oh my god, put him in the bullpen and just yeah. hope he can come in in a tie game, and then they'll score yeah. a run and he'll get a win. Like that's how bad he was, but. Last couple bad. games, yeah, I'd say I you're probably right, probably five, six starts. Mm-hmm. He's been pretty good, and yep. he just wasn't getting run support. But then when he got 199, because I was even telling my wife, I'm like, when when he was at 198, I'm like, it's not going to happen. Like, it's not happening this year. It's it's not in the cards. Sorry, Adam. Like, you're sitting in 198 the rest of your life. And all of a sudden, he gets 199. And it was funny, because I watched that game. 
The game ends. I look over at my wife and I say, oh, next start, he's getting 200. <laughs> and she was like, wow, okay, that's a total change. And I was like, because now he's at 199, he is going to pitch the best game of his life next time he pitches. And Against a good team. Too. A good team. And yeah. uh, apparently he didn't throw a ball over 88 miles per hour. Did you see that the entire game? Oh, no, I didn't hear that. No. Yeah. And that's he got crazy. the win. It was a gem. Like you said, great game by Wainwright. I mean, and and I don't know what but you you voiced your displeasure at Bally's for cutting away. Oh, and I don't I don't I don't know what they. I was at the game, so I don't know what they showed and what they didn't. But uh, you know, Wainwright came on the field uh, after a little bit of a delay. Um, I guess for commercials, but whatever. Came back on the field and he addressed the crowd. I don't know if they showed that on Bally's or not. Him talking, did they? Because he was he he had the microphone. And he was speaking to the crowd for a. Oh, little I didn't while. even know that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he talked just, to the crowd. I'm learning that now. Yeah, he was interviewed by Claiborne on the field, um, and uh, and then he he took the mic and he was just talking. Well, I guess Claiborne's interview was talking to the crowd, but yeah. uh, he was just you know how much he loved the city and you know how much he was so happy to to get two hundred and uh, he congratulated the Brewers and said that you know you guys are going to win this division, you've earned it, uh, and uh, I thought that was pretty classy. Um, and, uh, and and a nice little slap in the face of the Cubs who are still trying to catch them. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so. let's let's. It's weird that we're rooting for the Brewers, but I think we are. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah, and also, so yeah, the 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 Bally Sports. Literally, what it was was you saw the team. You know, they all come out on the field like they always do, and they win, and they're all giving their high fives and whatever. And it was like you could tell that there was just this like palpable feeling coming from the team like okay adam's gonna step out here and you could tell they were all kind of waiting and you heard the broadcasters i don't remember who uh who exactly it was that said it uh, might have been thompson that was like and you know they're all waiting for adam to get out here all right we'll be right back after break and i'm like no no <laughs> and like fucking it was seconds after i start going on twitter and seeing pictures of people posting wainwright coming out of the dugout and waving and i'm like You've got to be fucking kidding me. This is the one moment the Cardinals fans have been waiting for all fucking year. Yeah. And you're going to cut away to commercial. It was David Perron returning in Detroit again, over again. And this to me was much bigger. This is a much bigger moment. And they fucked it up just like Bally's does. I completely lost my shit. My wife was laughing at me. And I'm just like, fuck this. Get off this terrible fucking platform. Start a Cardinals network. What the hell are you doing? Jesus, I was losing my mind. So there is a and very I think I'm not the only one. There's a very good chance that no other Cardinal pitcher ever will get to 200 wins. It's just the way yeah. the game is the way the game is moving and how how pitchers don't get as many wins now as they used to per season. Yep. Uh, everything's so specialized. You're taking out of the game early. Um, it's and and it may never happen again. Um, and, and in major league baseball, um, there might be one guy now that can get to 200, but th nobody else is, I mean, if they do, it's going to be a long, long time. So it might, he might yep. be the last guy to get 200 wins. Maybe. Yeah. And it was, it was so frustrating to miss it. I saw the, you know, and then, well, then they cut back to it and they showed highlights of him and they were talking over it. It was, um, I'm drawing a blank, Carrie, uh, Chip Carey talking, and he's like, this was a production of Major League Baseball. And like, you're just seeing clips of Wainwright just like walk around, wave, and you know, give his team high fives. And he's got a big old smile. And I'm like, you're not even gonna let us experience this moment so, live. Like, so come they, on. They didn't have the interview on Bally's with Wainwright. I shut it off after that. I was too pissed. I don't okay, know. Maybe because, they did. Because Claiborne doesn't work for Bally's, right? He's on KMOX. So I'm wondering what Bally's would have done i did they i don't know if they had somebody interview wainwright after claiborne but claiborne when claiborne interviewed wainwright that's what the entire stadium heard because he was you know they, they pumped that audio uh throughout the entire stadium so. yeah uh so first of all we've got a lot of commentary going on in the chat right now about blues hockey so i know you guys are starved we're getting to that in a minute but holy shit matt harris uh 19 minutes into the show and i'm already claiming uh this is definitely comment of the show uh, Matt Harris, Bally Sports is like getting a BJ from a crocodile. You don't enjoy it. You didn't want it. And just when it's about to get good, you get bit. <laughs> so, oh my God, dude. That is, that's really, that is, that's was funny. that, tell me that's from something because my God, that is so clever. 
Good work, <laughs> sir. Um, I love it. Last comment uh, we want to get to before we get into uh, our normal stuff. Uh, and Bill, I'm sure you have plenty to say here, but uh, congratulations, St. Louis City SC clinching a playoff berth with a tie last night and uh, just a huge freaking moment. Awesome to see expansion team getting into the playoffs right now sitting as the number one seed. Plenty more work to do, but still very exciting to see our boys get in in their first year into the MLS playoffs. Did you, I mean, watching the game, I assume you watched it, the, and I'm not a, I, I really hate people that do this, um, but I couldn't help but think it a number of times last night with the broadcast team uh, that it was almost like, and I don't want to, I don't want to sound like this guy, but I'm going to, they, they were like pro LAFC. Uh, oh, it, there it, was, it, it, it was so strange. It was. Like every question, like the handballs uh, that weren't called, you know, that, that were, and and whether whether they were, whether they weren't, whatever. But it was like like after one replay, when they you couldn't really see what happened, the the, the color guy goes, uh, goes, I didn't see a handball. There's no handball there. There's no, no handball. Can't call it. No, not at all. Not at all. It's Taylor Quality, <laughs> St. Louis through and through. Really? It, it, okay. Yeah. It's it. I didn't. You know. It, I think right now where the city is, um, the, no calls are going their way. Right. The last three games they, oh, they have two games right. where they could have easily gotten wins uh if not for calls that went against them and you know a couple of penalty shouts in the game last night could have gone their way they're nothing no calls are going their way they're getting no no edge from uh from the officiating and you know I, I, with with a little help right it I I I didn't think that the handball in in the um the well, there first three. part right <laughs> three <laughs> the the one there was one angle that was like oh yeah it looks like handball and then the next one it's like oh not even close but mm-hmm. no I at the end of the day you came away from that game last night with the same advantage over the second place team right. you know you have six point lead. Uh, they have a game in hand. If they would have given up a, you know, the three points last night, that that would have. I, I agreed with the the commentary. That would have sunk the season, right? We would have wound up falling out of first. I think we still have a great chance at, at grabbing that, and uh, that's that's going to be huge to have home field advantage. Uh, oh, this when we team get needs to the playoffs. it. Yeah, they need. They, that's what I told the wife tonight. Was I'm like, man, if they can get home ice or home ice, home field. Um, I think this team could go all the way. If they don't, I worry because they have been a little rough suspect on the road. So yeah. we need the home field advantage to let the crowd play into the team and and uh, get this team where they need to go. Yeah, which is weird because to start the season they were very good on the road, and lately it's not been the same. So, uh, David Rawlings, uh, that might be a new live listener. Uh, he says, incredible to see. Favorite yes, it is. Uh, incredible to see City success in their first year. Sometimes success for inexperienced teams doesn't translate to the playoffs. I hope it will. In this case, go City. They're mm-hmm. such a tenacious group. I feel like this. And, and again, I've never watched the MLS playoffs, but they're a team that just never lets themselves get down. I do think their success will translate to the playoffs as long as they have the favorable matchups. So we will see. But uh, yeah, very exciting. And, uh, you know, again, Rough year for Blues fans from the previous season. Rough year for Cardinals fans. But a little bit here to celebrate for the Cardinals. A lot to celebrate for City. There is still some great stuff going on here in uh, the St. Louis sports scene. And uh, let's talk about beer because we all love beer. Uh, Official beers of episode number 429. You can follow each of us on the Untapped app. Uh, Let's start with Mr. Bill Day. What uh, What are you drinking there tonight, sir? I am drinking... An Alaskan Grizz Brown coffee. Uh, it's coffee ale. Um, so s- switching from the the IPAs and and you know the the lighter colored beers. Starting starting my my training camp. A little warm up here till we get to coffee stout season. Not too yeah. terribly far away. Um, really good, really good um, coffee ale. Uh, Alaskan. If you've never tried them, give them a try. Great, great microbrew. Um, I know um, Global Brew Edwardsville has carried them for a long, long time. 
pretty much find them in uh, every uh, everywhere that craft beer is available. And I also wanted to add that I am drinking it from my Orvis mm. can pinter that I got. So Orvis, I, I'm I'm a fan of their 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 uh, dog stuff. We have three Orvis dog beds, um, and also like some of their apparel. Um, they have a brand new store in Richmond Heights, just opened up in St. Louis this year. Grand opening is going on right now. Was over there tonight. Got this. And I like some stuff for Fritz. I like those uh, style glasses. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah, nice. they're nice. I have, a couple, I have a couple of those. Yeah. I, I had one. Um, PT's coffee, I think. And it broke. So happy to have another one. They're not as thick. The, the glass is thinner. Yep. On that style. And it's not as thick as like the regular pint glass. So you got to be careful. They I'm always... Grateful. Yeah, I'll say I'm very safe on those. I hand wash those every time. I don't put them in the dishwasher. Uh, I, I I dishwash everything. If I <laughs> if 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 it needs to be hand washed, I don't buy it. <laughs> hey, those margarita Cardinals glasses that we got when we went to a Cardinals game together way back when, they're still in my trunk for you, by the way. Um, do not push those in the dishwasher. They will oh, get deformed. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I still have them. Next time I see you, that was the last time I All saw right. you. Hold, is that Next right? time I see you, yeah, I will have those for you. That wasn't this year, Cardinal game. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was. It was, it was in, this it year. Was in May. Early in the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I put my first one in the dishwasher and it like distorted it and it was not usable. So huh. FYI, do not put those in the dishwasher. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Kurt, what are you drinking tonight? Well, I do not, I do not have a beer. I have a, I have a, I have a water with, uh, that's flavored with uh, fruit punch Mio in it. Oh, that's yeah. always good. I, I you know, Sam's had a special on the Mio uh, flavorings, so I got like a three pack for whatever it was, six bucks. So I, uh, nice. Yeah, you know, it's a. I'm on a. I'm been on a water kick lately, and the, it's a nice change of pace from just so regular tonight, water tape flavor. Tonight I'm drinking. I don't know if you can see that. My awesome uh, STL City mug. Is that a frosted uh, that, mug? Uh, yes, it is. Is it, I mean, is it cold frosted or is it laser? Oh, is it? No, 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 no. It just does the, it has the frost look, but no, it's not frost a frost finish. Mug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is a, it is a glass, like an actual glass, but it's, it's incredible. I got put this that bad at, boy uh, in the freezer. Farmer's market. Put that bad boy in yeah. the freezer and then put it Probably in good. Uh, but yeah, I'm drinking tonight. I'm having uh, the Ying, Yingling traditional lager. I think this might be the first time we've had Yingling on the show. Uh, maybe. Have I you, think I had it several years ago. Okay. Oh, did you have yeah. have any of you had the porter Yingling's Hershey's porter? No, I haven't either. Thanks, Tom Gibbons. I know. So he had like a pony keg at his house, and he was like, "Yeah, hey, I got this." I'm like, "Yeah, invite us over." Never did. So uh, it's supposed to be here in the area somewhere, like available, and I have never seen it. I'm and that's either. the one beer from Yingling I want to try that I've not had, and I can't find it. Hmm. So if anybody yeah, knows uh, in the St. Louis area where you can find Yingling Hershey's Porter, please let me know. Yes, comment now. Reach out on on Twitter or something or X, whatever. Um, because I'd like to try that too. Um, yeah, I, the traditional lager is okay. I I think Yingling overall is just a little hyped by St. Louis because we didn't used to be able to get it here, and I think now that we can, I think within a year we're not going to be hearing people talk about how great Yingling is. So. We'll see. Right. Um, it's good, but it's just to me, it's it's not like anything super special. But you're right. Maybe that porter. Maybe that porter is really freaking to good. Me, we'll to see. me, I've had Yingling before, and I I've never really been a big fan of it. It's okay. Um, I I would just. I mean, if I'm gonna have Yingling, I'll just have a Budweiser. I just that. Yep. I like that better. So it's the same kind I, of thing. I put them like in the better. same boat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I like it better. But yeah, whatever. it's it. it I think it's, you know, what Jeff was describing is it's it's the long distance relationship, right? Mm -hmm. The absence makes the heart grow fonder. And as soon as she moves in town, you're like, yep, see ya. The grass is my, always greener kind of a thing. I'm sure my brother's going to love me telling this story. But um, there was one time where he was dating a girl uh, that uh, was living here and they only dated for like two weeks. And she left for England, kind of like a friend situation. Uh, she was going over there for school for a semester. And so my brother was like, I'm going to go out and surprise her and I'm going to go stay with her for a week. And so, you know, he, you know, they were, they kept in touch. He shows up, he gets there within two days. He's calling my mom. He's like, 
can you wire me some money? I need to get the fuck out of here. She's like, why? And he's like, this woman is insane. And I think that's exactly what it is, Bill. It's yeah. She's far away. She's desirable. I need her. And then she gets there and it's like, eh, no, not so much. Eh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let's, uh, let's break into talking about some actual hockey before we get to our break. Uh, first big news comes today. Blues open training camp. Uh, they've got four consecutive days of practice sessions with 60 players divided into three groups. All training camp practice sessions are at Centene Community Ice Center and are open to the public. Uh, times are between 930 and 12, uh, each day. And keep in mind, uh, excuse me. Um, that, uh, uh, you know, you can see the whole schedule cause you know, some practices start at nine 30, some start at 10 30, just go onto the blues website and you can check out the schedules there. Uh, but the blues open the preseason on Saturday with two games. Uh, the, 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 the ridiculous, stupid, I hate them split squad matches, uh, at 2 PM, the blues are going to play, play the coyotes at enterprise center. And then at seven, they will play the coyotes at Intrust bank arena in uh, Wichita, Kansas. And that's the other thing about this. You are ex- you are letting people in Wichita or in Kansas, I guess, come to this game. Like, this is an off-site game. Check out the NHL. Let's, let's let you see some talent from the NHL. You're doing this in a split-squad game. So you're almost guaranteeing that at least half of the star players from these two teams aren't going to be in attendance for this game for people to Wichita to check out. I just... I, I know I bitch about it every year. I hate the split squad match. I think it's so fucking stupid. Well, I, I, I mean, I understand why they do it. It's you get more players get to play and they, you know, they get the more ice time. Right. So as opposed to it's a, a getting extra games on the schedule, I get it. Um, but I'm not going to, I mean, my, yeah, my it does suck. That, it my does suck. on that is they're going to play the same amount of games, no matter what. So what's the point in having them just split and have, two games in the same day. Well, like I said, to get the players to get more ice time. If you have I mean, players that wouldn't be getting, I mean, there's only so much ice time in a single game, right? Unless you want to change the, unless you want to have a different roster for the second game. Well, that's what I'm saying. Why don't you do like a Saturday, What's the Sunday, difference, then? What's Friday, the difference? Saturday? Because to me, the coaches don't get to like no. Craig Ruby. He's not going to be at both games. He wants to evaluate his players. He's going to have to go off whatever the assistant coaches tell him. All and right. to me, it's like, as a coach, you want to be involved in all of it. You want to see everything. And he's not going to be able to because he's got a split squad game. I just think it's completely unnecessary. Like, I, I'm i not saying that it's like, oh, my God, this is the dumbest thing the NHL does. Trust me, they do much worse. But to me, it's just this is unnecessary. You don't need to have a split squad game. Yeah, but early on in training camp, I think it makes more sense, though, because you you got a lot more players still around and you're giving them that opportunity. And and again, going back to Army's presser, for those young guys that this is their first training camp, today is the first day of the Stanley Cup final, right? <laughs> and so they're excited. They're going to want to be there. And hey, I think it's also going to be an opportunity, probably a, a funky way for uh, Arizona to um, meet some contractual requirements um, with uh, with their players, uh, getting to play a home game in front of 15,000 instead of 5,000. <laughs> Good point. Uh, so are you guys going to be able to make any training camp, uh, any preseason games that you guys know you'll be going to, anything like that? Uh, usually if I go to a preseason game, it's kind of impromptu. Yeah, me too. Nothing, nothing on the schedule yeah. right now. It's like it's like that day. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. But, yeah, I, I mean, with tomorrow, like, tomorrow's last day of uh, seven straight days off of work for me, and I've already got something scheduled in the morning, or else, you know, I definitely drive out there. I haven't been um, ever, so it would have been nice, but uh, unfortunately, it's not going to work. I out. used to make a point to go every single year to training camp and then oh, hit I as many too. preseason games as I can, but just being an adult. You know, it's just it's like, so hard to schedule. And, you know, for me, it's like, you know, honestly, like my job is super cool, super flexible. I probably could have even like gone tomorrow and like even taken meetings there. They wouldn't care. But it's just, you know, for me, I'm going out of town on Monday. I got plenty of stuff going on around the house that I'm like, 
I just can't do it. Like, you know, I think about the grand scheme of things, you know, it's like, do I want to go to training camp or do I want to go to more regular season games? And to me, let's yeah. go see some hockey in, in real time. There were, a, there were a few years in a row where I went to training camp uh, back when it was over in Brentwood um, at the Brentwood ice rink. That's, and that was, that was crazy because security was so lax. <laughs> that place. I mean, my I I think I've told this story before. My cousin and I we we walked out of the front of the the rink and then walked around the outside around the back and the door was open to back where the locker rooms were, I guess, uh, just outside the locker rooms and we walked in and we saw a huge duffel bag, the blues a bunch of huge uh, duffel bags for the blues. We could have just walked they were right by the door. We could there was no one around. We could have walked off with the uh, three or four players equipment. Chips <laughs> and pulled the car around and just taking it. There was no, there was nobody around. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, I, uh, the first year I went um, in 2000, so I was after the the uh, lockout, the 2005 lockout. That next year, a, a couple buddies and I went the first day. And it was the same thing. I walked down to the bathrooms. And for anybody who's ever been to the ice zone in um, uh, Hazelwood, Bridgeton, um, I walked down to the bathrooms. And I look over and I see like 10 player hockey bags. And there's nobody around. And the state, the, the 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 arena was packed with people. I'm like, and there were sticks everywhere. I'm like, dude, anyone could walk up right now and just take equipment, take a stick. And yeah. I don't, I mean, maybe the people at the door would have noticed, but it's like, you could have gotten pretty damn far. And that was when the mall was still fully open. So you could just walk down to the other end and nobody would ever notice. We, when, when we walked around to the back, when it was the Brentwood Ice Rink, we were on the back. That was 90, 93, I think. So that was that was that was a that was a way ways ago. The Guy A Bear era as yeah. it's known around my house. Yes. Well yeah, <laughs> because that was the yeah, my cousin brought his uh his uh goalie trapper and had Guy Bear try it on and threw him a puck and he caught a puck with it. <laughs> Dumb. it sounds kinda silly now, but it was really cool at the time. So oh, I bet. Yeah. Uh well I'm I'm uh I just uploaded a video. I will share it. I don't know if I ever showed you guys this. One of my claims to fame in 2006 was I was interviewed by, I believe it was Fox 2, um, and I said one of the dumbest things ever on television that my family still gives me trouble about. So here we go. St. Louis's hockey team is back on the ice. The Blues hold their first full team practice for the first time since the spring of 2004 at the St. Louis Mills Ice Zone. Team owners locked out players in a labor dispute, wiping out all of last season. Now the Blues are trying to win back those fans. I am super stoked that hockey's back. I went to a bunch of River Otters games last year, trying to get my hockey fixed. It didn't work, and the Blues are back, and I am so pumped. I'm great, excited, ready to go. Drop the puck. Drop the puck. The first 500 fans of today. I am super stoked that hockey's back. I went to a bunch of River Otters games last year, trying to get my hockey fixed. It didn't work, and the Blues are back, and I am so pumped. I am super stoked. That I am super stoked. I am super stoked. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you know what's funny? That 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 was coming out of the lockout, right? Right. So. I was interviewed that was it that same year? No, I was interviewed. I think it was the previous lockout. Come on, lockout. It was 90, whatever it was, 90, 96, whatever, 96, 95. whatever it was. Yeah. But I was at Cahokia ice rink and, mm. and I guess I just left, I just stepped off stick and puck and they were, they had a, a camera crew there for, I don't know what channel it was, two, four, five. And I was, interviewed for and i had a jose cuervo bandana on my head that i wore into my <laughs> helmet <laughs> and uh yeah i was and they asked me about the lockout and i said coming back and i said i did, I, did, I don't think i said super stoked but uh i didn't get it i didn't re get it recorded but it was uh that was pretty uh that was pretty funny and i had guys on the team uh next game they were like uh, i was like, saw you on tv mr jose cuervo <laughs> yeah. Yep. I know my family still like, I'll say something like I'm excited for the season to start and they'll be like, Oh, are you super stoked? Like, Shut up. <laughs> super stoked. Yeah. That's good stuff. Uh, 
All right. So having said that, we will go to our first or only commercial break. Uh, Thanks for listening to Jeff, Kurt, and Bill on Let's Go Blues Radio. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. We'll return after these messages. Every beer league hockey night, I grab my hockey bag and sticks and throw them in the trunk of my car. And the very next thing I do, I mix up a boost of energy courtesy of RockinThatIDLife.com. It's formulated to break up its delivery in three ways, which helps me get through all three periods of hockey. Phase one provides a rapid onset of energy, concentration, alertness, and motivation. By period two, I'm receiving a dose of sustained energy, increased focus, metabolism, cognitive function, performance, and feeling of well-being, which I need with the way I play. In phase three, I'm getting fatigue protection without jitters and crash, an elevated mood and a reduction of fluid retention to help me make the big play when it counts. This same triphasic approach helps me when I drink it during work hours or simply just for a pick-me-up when I need it. Try one of the four energy flavors by visiting rockinthatidlife.com, but make sure to email Dustin at rockinthatidlife at gmail.com and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you to receive an additional 10% off your order. That's rockinthatidlife.com. Center Ice Brewery is a beer lover's dream for hockey fans. Based in St. Louis, Missouri, owner Steve Albers has been brewing hockey-themed favorites for thirsty sports fans since 2017. From the Beauty IPA to the Old Arena Lager, a cold, frosty, hockey-themed beer is just what the doctor ordered for hockey fans in St. Louis. Make sure to check your local beer store for Center Ice Brewery beer today. LGB. Let's go beer. During the magical 2019 playoff run, I was in the midst of buying my current home. Every time I spoke with my realtor, obviously, home buying was the discussion. But in the back of my mind, I couldn't stop thinking about what was destined to happen for our St. Louis hockey team. If only there were a realtor who could have walked me through the process, held my hand when needed, but was there to be a sounding board when I wanted to complain about a certain hand pass goal. Let realtor Mike Burgoyne with Real Brokerage be that for you. He'll have your needs top of mind as he skates you through the home buying or selling process, dangling you past any obstacles, and assisting on all your home goals. Check out strikewithmike.com for more information or give him a call directly at 314-753-4060. That's Mike Burgoyne with Real Brokerage at strikewithmike.com and that number again is 314-753-4060. Don't forget to tell Mike that Let's Go Blues Radio sent you. And now, back to Let's Go Blues Radio, the longest running St. Louis Blues podcast with Price, Ponder, and Day. All right, and as we come back from break, we have the uh, big news that came from the past week. Braden Shen was named the 24th captain in Blues history, according to the St. Louis Blues. That should be the asterisk, because uh, if you ask our <laughs> friend right. SPL Blues history, he will tell you that is not correct. Um, but we'll actually <laughs> every, time get- there's a, every time there's a new captain name, this comes up. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. So I will uh, we'll actually get to that uh, a little bit more in a second. But uh, first of all, let's uh, get into some of the news about this. Robert Thomas, Justin Falk, and Colton Pareko will serve as assistant captains. Uh, Doug Armstrong was mulling over not naming a captain, but apparently he set up a meeting with Shen last Wednesday and asked him to serve as captain. Um, there's a, a lot of quotes here, Bill. I know you said you just watched the, uh, the, the presser itself, but there's a lot of good quotes we can get to here. Um, but clearly, um, I think to me and, and I know Kurt, there was some discussion a little bit on social media, uh, probably just a very vocal minority, uh, that, you know, maybe I, well, sh- what? I, well, I was going to say that. I know I know where you're going with Thomas, right? But right, yeah. As far as like some folks thought Thomas was going to get the nod for captain, and and any online poll you saw had Shen easily winning, but there was a substantial minority, right? With like twenty percent, twenty five percent of people, way more than you would think that that thought Thomas was going to get it. And I, for the life of me, I don't understand that thinking whatsoever. Yeah, I I'm, I'm with you again. I, I to, to emphasize what I said to you on Twitter when when you commented back to me. Um, 
is that like I, I get I kind of understand the sentiment, right? Because it's like I think of like a Connor McDavid, and and again uh, the, the comparison here is ridiculous. So I, I understand that, but I think of like a Connor McDavid when he was young, Sidney Crosby the same too. Where it's like, okay, eventually this guy is going to be your captain, so might as well, even though he's young, let's just do it now, and now he's a captain forever. Um, I think some people looked at Robert Thomas like that, and I just you can't make the same comparison. To me, Robert Thomas, yes. If Braden Shen is gone in two years and Robert Thomas is still playing at the level he is and he's still the same guy he is and he's getting along with his teammates, yeah, Robert Thomas is probably your next captain. But as I said to you, man, like, how long did we hear Barrett Jackman is the next captain of this team? But when it became time, they gave it to Eric Brewer. And then when it came time <laughs> after that, they gave it to David Backus. You know, it was something else came up in that time frame that made them say, Maybe Barrett isn't our guy. So who knows where we'll be in two or three years. Maybe there's somebody else that's like, oh, that guy needs to be your captain. So why would you give it to Thomas when you don't know what's going to happen in a couple of years? Well, as as far as McDavid and and Crosby go, you know, those are generational talent players. You're some of the best to ever play the game, right? You know, arguably. I mean, you could make, I mean, when McDavid's career is over, you know, it's going to be maybe a Tim and Gretzky, right? Top two, who knows? But uh, Thomas is not that caliber of player. I mean, he's an excellent, excellent player. But I just, I, I don't, I don't think his game, even last season, was well rounded enough to, for him to be captain of this team. I don't. I mean, I understand that he did all kinds of interviews. He was like the guy to do interviews last season, um, after games and things. He did a lot of them. Uh, so I guess some people would think, oh, they're grooming him to be captain. They're they're getting him out there, spokesperson for the team, kind of a thing. Uh, but uh, I, it, when you have a guy like Braden Shen on the team, you cannot name <laughs> Robert Thomas as the captain of this team. And like I agree with you, Jeff. Not right now. It, Robert Thomas's day may very well come uh, in a cut two three years, whatever. But not right now. It's it, there's, there's not a chance in hell. And and it was mentioned that Armstrong debated not naming a captain. I don't know how the majority of people feel about this, but a team not naming a captain to start the season it would be a disgrace I, I, to start the season. So you've had all season to build this team, right? To to f- uh, uh, fine tune this team, to add, remove players, whatever, to get ready for the season. And after you're everything's said and done, and you got this roster ready to go, you don't have a captain. You haven't built this team. There's no captain caliber person on this team. That's a huge fail if you're a GM. How do you not have a team that has a guy that is captain ready to be uh, on this team? I don't. That boggles my mind. It's to, to consider not naming a captain to start the season. Bill, what do you think? I mean, it, it was a no-brainer. Like, it, it's not, you know, Shen has been kind of the natural emotional leader of this team for several years. You know, O'Reilly, uh, you know, was captain in fact, but you know, leave, you know, breaking uh, cameras and penalty boxes, and you know, doing <laughs> doing the kinds of emotional things that a captain should be doing. Right. Uh, O'Reilly, you got a little bit of it, but, uh, you know, it, it's you always kind of felt like it was, uh, you know, almost an albatross around O'Reilly's neck to be captain and, and and to especially last season with how bad the team was um, or how not bad, but how they just didn't live up to expectations. And he's a guy with high expectations, especially of himself. Um I, there's no other person on this team that should have been considered. They absolutely made the right move. Uh, Thomas, uh, give him a couple of years, but man, he is still way too young. Um, let him get some more experience. Let him, let him, you know, experience life a little bit, right? He's, he's still 26, 25, 26. He's not, not, uh, if that even, um, yeah. Yeah. And the whole thing with, you know, debating about not going with the captain, I can understand it. Like Chicago's not doing it. 
you know, they're, they're letting the sea breathe after, um, I, that's the way they put it, um, after the, um, you know, uh, Jonathan Taves, uh, stepped away from the team. Um, and they're not going to just hoist that straight on to Connor Bedard. And I, I think that makes sense in that scenario, but this team, this team needs direction and they need a solid, you know, a, an emotional center. And that's, that's Shen. There's no oh, yeah. other player on this team. It's no question. No I question I, in my mind at all. I agree completely. It's... When when O'Reilly was named captain, there was somebody in my circle who was like, listen, O'Reilly's a great choice. He seems like the obvious choice to most people. But he's like, to me, the captain has, is, and always will be as long as he's on this team, Braden Shen. He's like, he is the emotional leader of this team. Whenever there is anything like, oh, they just gave up a bad goal and their heads are hanging – Braden Shen goes out, punches the guy, starts a fight. Uh, they need a big goal in a late moment game or in a late moment of a game. Braden Shen's out there on the ice, and he's the one that's either setting up the goal or scoring it. He's like, that is the emotional leader of this team, and that is my captain. And I couldn't argue with him. Like, I agreed with the Ryan O'Reilly captaincy, but I was like, you've got, I mean, you've got an excellent point. Like, Braden sure. Shen to me, when if O'Reilly leaves and Shen's still here, he better be the guy getting the C. And I think they made yeah. the right call here. And for all those reasons, I agree completely. Also, with Shen, he's the guy who fired his agency, his representative, right, his agent, and and then hired a different agency specifically to get a job to to get a deal done with the Blues to make sure he stayed here. He wanted to be here, so he fired his agency, the same agency that Petro had has. Yep that didn't get a deal done with Petrangelo here. So Shen fired them and hired a different agent and got a deal done right away And he because he wanted to be here. So all the other reasons that you listed, Jeff, are spot on as to why he should be captain. And that, and that the last, what I just said there is just one more. It's like that guy wants to be captain of this team. He, he I mean, you can, he just, he, he, he is the epitome of a St. Louis blue if, if there is such a thing. He, oh, as yeah. someone said on on Twitter, uh, or X, whatever the fuck it's called, uh, <laughs> that he's he's like he's like a Brian Sutter type of captain, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a more talented David Backus, you know. Um, so I, I I have I that's, you know I, I I there there are people there, there's some uh, conversations in the in the chat about uh, Justin Scott said that Falk would have been a great choice as well, even though Shen was the guy. And I said, yeah, I mean, you know, if Shen's not on this team, I think Falk gets serious consideration to be captain of this team. Um, you know, he's captain of Carolina. I think he'd be a fine captain. I think he's he's uh, he's he's that kind of a guy. Um, but yeah, Shen, no brainer. Easy, easy pick. And and I think to me, Craig Berube would definitely agree. He has a great quote here I'm going to read. But, you know, just you see how he uses Shen in games. And again, mentioning what my friend said a couple of years ago. It's true. You know, late in the game, it's Braden Shen going out over the boards. Um, you know, face off in the offensive zone, it's Braden Shen taking it, even with O'Reilly on this team sometimes. So, you know, it was just, it, it's an obvious choice, I think, for the head coach. Uh, something he said, quote, Shen is a leader. He's an experienced player. He's done a lot of really good things in St. Louis, and he's been part of a winning team. He shows leadership on and off the ice on a daily basis, and he's worked hard since day one when he got here. And I think we can all agree if you guys remember back to that awful year, 2017, 18, um, when they were the best team in the league at the end of 2017 and then fell flat on their faces in 2018. The reason they were so good in 2017 in that year was because of the acquisition of Braden Shen. He added this punch, this knuckles that this team needed. And he just put the team on his back and played incredible hockey. And I remember just every day and, Go back to one of our shows and you'll hear us every single show that season saying, I can't believe we got Braden Shen for Yori Laterra. Like, tell yeah. me how that makes sense. And, I, and here and it is, 2023, and, a, and, and, and I'm first, still saying that. And a first round draft pick. But still. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> um, we, were yeah, saying, and, uh, we were saying uh, as soon as O'Reilly was traded, we were like, Shen's an S captain. It's him. Oh, yes. It's got to yeah, be. He has to be. Right away. The whole time. Yep. And you're right. Like, 
and I, and I think we've all grown an appreciation for players who want to be here. And it's clear to me, Braden Shen wants to be here. We talked about David Perron, Tyler Bozak, guys like that who signed and wanted to play for the St. Louis Blues. Listen, I'm not trying to demonize anyone. I don't think Alex Petrangelo fit that mold. I think he was ready to move on. It's pretty clear. For those of you who don't remember, he was fucking shoving Vegas in St. Louis's face and saying, they're offering me this, give me better. You know, match this ridiculous deal they're giving me and I won't uproot my family. But it's like, dude, no one else is going to match that deal. So a guy like Shen, like you said, he fired that agency and said, absolutely not. I want to stay put. I love it here. And like you said, too, exactly. A Brian Sutter, David Backus type captain. He's not only going to be on the bench firing up his team. He's going to go out and show you how to fucking do it. And that's what I love about this guy. Um, I want to add one more quote from Shen. He says, I don't think the uh, being the captain means you have to change much. You just be who you are. Just because I'm wearing a C doesn't mean I have to become someone I'm not. You rely on your teammates around you. That's who is going to make you better. It's about the guys in the locker room. You lean on your teammates, and together we can get this thing moving in the right direction. I personally love that quote because the one thing that I bitched about and I still bitch about to this day with Dallas Drake being named captain his game completely went in the shitter the day he was named captain because I think he did try to be like, oh, I can't be that bag of knuckles and taking penalties in front of the net now, so I just need to like try and set people up and score goals. And it's like, dude, that was never your game. What are you doing? It was clear on the ice that he just was not the same guy. And maybe that was just because of the lockout. Things changed. Strategies changed. I don't know. But it was the minute that C went on his chest, you saw a change in Dallas Drake. And that's why I'm like, Dallas Drake is the worst captain in Blues history. Yes, worse than Eric Brewer. But Braden Shen, I feel like he gets it. He knows his game doesn't need to change. He's already a leader on this team. Just keep playing the same way, and you're going to lead this team, hopefully, back to a playoff spot. Well, a couple additions the Blues have made for PTOs in uh, training camp. If you went today, you probably already saw these guys skate around. Nick Ritchie, Sam Bitten, and Andy Walensky uh, joined the Blues on professional tryouts. Uh, we'll get to uh, Ritchie in a second. Uh, first, I want to mention Sam Bitten. Uh, he play, he's 23, played for the Blues in the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, he played in the Czech League last year, 48 games played, one goal and 79 penalty minutes. Uh, he is the brother of uh, Will Bitten, who played in four games for the Blues last year, and I believe he's still on the Thunderbirds. Um, Andy Walensky is 30, split last season between AHL Hartford and Rockford, uh, collected four goals and 15 assists in and 14 penalty minutes in 54 games. He's played in 46 NHL games with the Anaheim Ducks, Scored one goal, five assists, and six points, and uh, eight penalty minutes. Uh, but the big one to me, Nick Ritchie, he is 27, split last season between the Arizona Coyotes and Calgary Flames, recorded 13 goals, 13 assists, and 26 points, and 53 penalty minutes and 74 games played. He is a former first-round 10th overall draft pick, uh, picked by the Anaheim Ducks in 2014. Uh, if you watch the NHL, you've heard Nick Ritchie. You've probably heard of him. Um, I love this. And again, I've always said anyone for a PTO, if you can bring them in, see what they got, maybe they fit the gel of your team, go with it, try it out. You're not paying them anything. As far as I know, I think you might be paying for their room and board, but that's probably it. Um, I, I love the addition of Nick Ritchie. Um, other guys, we'll see what happens with them. They may get some AHL contracts, but I love just taking a chance on Nick Ritchie, seeing what he's got. I think he is a, uh, kind of a casualty of the cap not really going up much because I feel like if this were a normal year and they're, you know, we're not talking about COVID ever happening. Um, I think Nick Ritchie is a guy who gets an NHL contract this summer, but because teams are so tight right now, it's, we don't have room for you, bud. Sorry. And so he's going to have to take a league minimum deal somewhere and prove it. But uh, why not St. Well, Louis? Give it a shot. See what he's got. Well, the, the Logan Brown experiment, didn't work out and that was he was 11th overall so yeah. you gotta step it up and go 10th overall <laughs> right go for go for nick yeah. ritchie um you know what if he does make this team you know uh he might put up 30 points i think 31 was the most he's had in 60 games uh, a few years ago so four years ago so uh 
you know, I no none of these guys like blow my skirt up as far as like, hey, that's a great. But you know, yeah, like I said, uh, like you said, Jeff, uh, Nick Ritchie is uh, the most intriguing of the three, though. So uh, uh, I think he he uh, and if he makes the team, it's probably as a, a press box guy, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, plug in because of injury. So yeah, I, I see him as this year's Tyler Pitlick. Right. Yeah. Another guy that's brought in on the cheap. Yeah. Um, but uh, do you know Tyler? Uh, sorry, Tyler Pitlick. He he has namesakes in the league, too. But um, do you know what uh, Nick Ritchie's claim to fame? He he has a first in National Hockey League history. Do you know what that is? I feel like I should know. I this is come this is all slowly coming back no i don't he was the f- he and his brother were the first pair of brothers in the nhl to have ever been traded for one another last year's oh. trade deadline that's right <laughs> i think i think we talked about that me and uh, uh austin when we did our trade deadline show yeah yeah that's right Yep, not the first in professional sports that went to Mark and Paul Gasol in the NBA back in 2008. But uh, yeah, still, still get, interesting. Yeah, get to get getting the trivia dusted off and you know ready to go for this year. Um, I wanted to get some trivia with you guys because uh, I actually forgot to do this with the captaincy, but we'll do it after we're done. Um, talking about the PTOs here, I yeah, I agree. I don't think Richie is a guy that. Um, is gonna really blow anyone's skirt up. Um, I I look at Nick Ritchie a little bit more than Tyler Pitlick, and say I think he's your replacement for. And I'm sorry to say this, when Sammy Blay gets hurt. Oh, I think, stop it! When, come Wait, on, is he we getting know traded back happen. to the stop Rangers? <laughs> is he getting <laughs> traded back to the Rangers? <laughs> Come on, I, I I hope I'm wrong, but come on. Every year he's had some kind of weird injury, and I just think this is a guy, like, let's get a guy who's got some veteran experience. He's a much better skater than Logan Brown, like, and he has put up, you know, a fair amount of points in the NHL as, like, a third-line center. So you never know. He might be able to turn into something here, but I agree, nothing. It's not like we're going to get 60 points out of Nick Ritchie. But is he a center? I thought he was a winger. I uh, place left wing and center, I believe. Oh, okay, okay, could be wrong, but that's what I think. All right. I, I thought it was a left winger, but uh, center too. Okay. All right. Anything else on PTOs, or do we want to get some captain trivia? Let's do trivia. All right. All right, guys. Here it is, and I'm going to start the clock the minute I ask. This is a team effort, so I need both of you to have your uh, have your your answers ready. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting myself ready here. Okay. Are we ready for some trivia here? It's a timed trivia. Okay. Like 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 the number number of questions we get in a certain amount of time? No, no, no. It's it's one question and it's how many you can name. Oh, All right. Captains? I'm going to go ahead and say Bob Plager because we at STL Blues history would tell us that he has not ever actually been a captain. Uh but yes, starting now, name all 24 Blues captains. Go. Berenson. <clears throat> Brian Sutter. Back. Uh, okay, we'll go back. Uh, uh, Petrangelo. Rick Mahar. Bacchus. Who he checked for a living. Um, he did. <laughs> um, Brett Hall. Brett Hall. Corson. Um, Shane Corson. Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Gretzky. Um, Dallas Drake. Dallas Drake. Covered him. Did they say um, Brewer? Brewer. No, he not. But there you go. Ten. Okay. Pronger. 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 Um, um, twenty-five seconds. I'm going. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to go backwards here. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly. Twelve. Um. So you said David Backus, uh, Dallas Shen. Drake, Braden Shen, Braden Shen, Braden Shen. <laughs> yep. Um, Ten seconds. Brewer. Wait. Who else? Who else is in there? Is it Brian Sutter? Yeah, we we Brian, Brian Sutter. Sutter. Okay. Um, and time. Uh, Perico. We got. All right, I'll give it to you. I'll be nice. I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, that's you got terrible. 15. 15 of the 24 because I gave you Bob Plager. All right, you ready? Let's go through the whole list. I didn't go. I didn't, we, didn't, we didn't get early days as, as much either. Yeah. So. No, you did not. Um, um, there's Jimmy a couple Roberts. That I, Jimmy Roberts. Jimmy Roberts was one of them. Um, yeah. All right, here we go. This is in order of uh, the captaincy. Al Arbor, 
yeah. which you did not get. Gary Unger, Fine. Frank St. Marseille, Bob Plager, Barkley Plager, Red Berenson, Jimmy Roberts. Scott, I said Barry, yeah. yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, Barry Gibbs, which I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> oh, the singer? Season. Yeah. Uh, Brian Sutter. <laughs> fucking hate Gergo, the Bee <laughs> Rick Mahar, Scott Stevens, when you did Scott not Stevens, get. Scott Stevens, yeah. Garth Butcher, Brett Hall, Wayne Garth Gretzky. Butcher. Yeah, Garth Butcher was one you did not get. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shane Corson, Chris Pronger, Al McKinnis was one you guys did not get. I know that's that's well, we that only one. had was a minute. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Uh Dallas Drake, Eric Brewer, David Backus, Alex Petrangelo, and Ryan O'Reilly. You got 15 of 24. That's I think you I think you give us two minutes. We get them. We get all but a couple. Yeah. Probably you probably don't get all the early ones. I don't nah. think we get Barry Gibbs. We got Barry not Gibbs. get Barry Gibbs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Might have forgot St. Marseille, too. Uh, other than that. Yeah. Al Arbor so was the a, only no reason that the only reason I could be wrong on this. So STL blues history, if you're listening, please correct me. Um, the only reason that I think I would have gotten Barry Gibbs was because I think, or not Barry Gibbs, I'm sorry. Frank St. Marseille was because um, I believe that was one that STL blues history, like, like kept messaging the blues and saying St. Marseille was one of your captains. Why do you not have him listed? And I think it took him years, and they finally put him on I've the list. I've got the damn Captain Canvas print right to my right. I didn't even look at it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you totally it had all but cheated. a couple on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. It's just well, too honest. Uh, Blues. It's still good. It still is good, guys. For a minute, you got 15 of them. That's pretty solid. I, I give you props. That was good. Uh, so the Blues go one and one at the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. Guys, it's unfortunate. Uh, Mike Meyer and I made jokes last week uh, that we did not get to talk about the Traverse City Tournament. <laughs> or the Traverse because City. I don't Traverse City? pronounce it incorrectly. Traverse City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even I had to ask him before I said it. I'm like, where did what did they used to participate in? And he says it correctly. I'm like, damn it, you say it correctly too. <laughs> uh, so the Blues go one and one at the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. Uh, they beat the Wild five to one on Friday and then fell to the Blackhawks five nothing on Saturday uh, against Minnesota. Mikhail Abramov, Nikita Alexandrov, Alexis Bonifon, uh, Zach Dean, and Keen Washkarak all scored. Vadim Jarenko was in net. And then uh, that uh, Blackhawks game was, unfortunately, that was the one I was able to watch. Yeah. Uh, Bedard scored the hat trick against the Blues, I, and uh, the Blues just, who, they, they did not. Who was in net that for, that, for the Blues in that game, the second game? I believe they had Cranley and... Yeah, um, terrible goal. It was, Ellis? It was Ellis on goal? Whoever started... Yeah, that, that, was, that was bad goaltending. <laughs> <laughs> Not to take anything from Bedard, because yeah. I saw I saw parts of that game. I saw his, I saw his goals. Nasty wrist shot, man. Uh, oh, that oh second my goal. God. I think it was a power play it's goal. Just, Whoo! That that just curl in and then yep. shoot. Oh, oh and God, he, he picked that corner. That that was okay. The goal that he scored from the horrible angle, uh, left side in the corner, uh, shot it far upper upper glove, I guess. Uh, I don't know how that angle was even that lane for the puck was even there. He was so far back in his net under the crossbar. Uh, so yep. anyway, not to take him from Bedard, he's he's gonna he's gonna be an okay player. But uh, do you guys feel that his hat trick was over? Yes, because of the, look who was on the ice. <laughs> yeah, I mean that this kid is a bona fide number one center already in the NHL, and he's playing against a bunch of eighteen and nineteen yeah. year olds like guys who if he doesn't. It I, to me it would have been a much bigger story if he didn't score in this tournament. No, he didn't. You know, like holy shit, what's wrong with yeah. Bedard? <laughs> so, but no, I mean, I don't. Did, so, how much of the games did you guys watch? Did you watch both? Did you watch the no, whole? No, I, I I saw highlights of the uh, the highlights of both. Uh, watched a few minutes yeah. of the second game. I forgot where that was. That was on. Uh, it was on the Blues website, I think. On uh, as a replay yeah, it was on YouTube, yeah. So I watched yeah. a few minutes of that and saw uh, Bedard's goals. So, yeah, I lot. caught I yeah. caught a couple of clips on uh, social media of Bedard lighting us up, but that was about it. I watched. Uh, I, I was like I said, I watched clips of the first game. I did not watch the whole thing. I was at the uh, actually at the Forest Park Balloon Glow Friday night, which is the first time I've ever gone to that. Um, very cool, but holy shit, I will never go again. People. Mm. 
the entire fucking city yeah, was yeah. there. I, I was there a long like, time it's ago. It's incredible. I was there a long time ago, and it was insane. It, 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 they it's need nuts. To, they need to like take it somewhere else because <laughs> right. the, the traffic. Yeah, is I'm terrible. sorry. Like as cool as Forest Park, Forest Park is just fucking beautiful. I love it. I if I lived next to it, I'd be there every day. But I'm sorry. Like having events in there is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. It's impossible. Well, and that the police presence was was non-existent. They this is a huge event for the city of St. Louis. I think it actually is outside of I don't even know. Do they even do the fair St. Louis anymore? Mm, no. I know that for the longest they did the time parade this was like fireworks the, once this year. Yeah, they, they, there was no official. Yeah, so like, it probably is officially the biggest event in St. Louis now. Mm. And because I know it was like number two for the longest time. So like the fact that that you have this giant event put on by the city. Dude, we were on Hampton Avenue for two hours trying to park. And the problem was you had police with their cars that were blocking certain, like they, they wouldn't let people on from the highway. So they had the, the whole, th but they didn't have any cops out. So these people are just making these like crazy, like U-turns where they shouldn't be making them dangerous, you know, going down one, like, like an, a ramp and then turning back and coming back into Forest Park so they can try and get around the trap. I don't know how there's not people dying at this thing every year. So it was just insane. I'm like, get some damn police presence. What are you doing, St. Louis? People go bananas for balloons and the, the balloon glow. I know. Be because it, it, that event in itself is just <clears throat> crazy. But there were, there, they have one annually in Marine, Illinois, which is not far from where I live. But... And so I took my kids there one year. I, 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 you, there was not a parking space available in Marine. It was just everything was taken. You had to park of uh, two miles away and walk. It was absurd, uh, and how crazy. crazy it was. I'm like, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I if you people for whatever reason, it is cool. It's really neat, uh, but. It but is. man, the people go out and brave all this traffic and the people, and like you said, the entire city of St. Louis. Uh, it it's like you really got to love balloons to to weather through that stuff. That's nuts. And, and well, and that's the thing is my my son does love balloons, like like normal balloons, hot air balloons. He just thinks they're so cool. And so it was really cool taking him. It's the first time we've ever gone. It was cool taking him, and they're lighting up all the balloons, and he's just sitting in his chair going, "Oh wow!" And he's just like shaking. He's so excited. It was yeah. really cool. But it was like, I even said to him, I go, man, enjoy this because we're, not, we're never, we're never coming again. back. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> dude, it was insane. And my father-in-law was with us. And he was like, the only way that I would ever do this again is if we made a whole day of right. it. If it was you like, have to, let's go to the zoo during right. the day. You have to be in and the then, park well in yeah, advance. And then like have a picnic, you know, and then, and then go down to the area at like five o'clock when they open yeah. it. You know, and it's like. That's the only way. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know if I'd want to do an all day in Forest Park. Yeah. Like, sure, it sounds like a good idea, but I feel like by four o'clock, I'm like, I just want to fucking go sit. And in my like chair. you said, getting out of there when it's done, like everyone's leaving, leaving Forest Park is a you're an hour. Right. An hour yes. getting out of there. Getting yeah. Getting out was oh, fine really? because I had to park oh, okay. two fucking <laughs> miles away. Yeah, if you it right. took it literally, we we so we you know, we parked because we actually parked on the other side of the zoo. Uh, and it's at the other end of Forest Park. And so we park and I even was like, I think I know how to get there, but maybe like maps will show me a quicker walking route. I pull up maps, 35 minute walk. I'm like, God damn it. And I told, I told my wife, I'm like new business idea. Let's buy like three golf carts. And then at events like this in Forest Park, just drive around and be like, Hey, you need a ride 10 bucks. And it's like, dude, you could probably make bank doing that uh forest park uh larger than central park by a lot i think yep. in, in new york by a whole lot it is yeah. and it's i think it's the largest donated park in the country largest i believe what is it largest what park it donated land oh it was donated by a rich donated guy land. okay i was i know it's not the largest city park but donated. no but i think it's the largest donated land in a huh. city in the entire u.s hmm. That's a lot, that's Could a lot. be wrong. If I'm wrong, please correct me. It is. All right. Let's get back to talking about the blues and not bitching about the awfulness <laughs> of St. Louis City. Um, the city, not the <laughs> right. soccer team. 
Uh, Blues uh, did announce their 2023-24 jersey schedule. Uh, so they will be using the usual suspects. The yellow has gone away. Uh, the home blue, the away white, the heritage blue, and the 90s vintage jerseys, all of our favorite jersey. Uh, they're making a return. So uh, the only night they'll be wearing the 90s vintage jersey is March 13th versus the L.A. Kings. The Heritage jersey, also known as the Saturday jersey, something they've kind of adopted from the Cardinals. All Saturday home games out during the year, they'll be wearing those jerseys. And then, of course, every other game, home and away jerseys. Uh, when they first launched the reverse retro uh, 90s, the, the big red hideous things, uh, That's Whoa. that was when we watched it in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> right we yep. turned we we changed our our color tvs into black and white tvs and it was much more enjoyable to watch well and i i think i think we were t talking on because we, we have a slack channel we used to, to chat throughout the week and i think i you messaged all both of us and you were like dude this is awful i don't even want to watch this game and i was just like dude i just turned it down to black and white and holy shit it is actually <laughs> it was, so much better and you were like oh my god yes idea. and yeah, so keep that in mind, folks. If you hate those jerseys like we do, just turn your contra was a contrast or tone or whatever it is on your TV. Well, turn it all the way down and make it. Black yeah, but and it's white. not the they're not using the reverse retros. They're just using the '90s vintage. The clowns. Yeah, yeah the clowns, not the red, not the not the it. big red eyesores. The the the, the red ones. The, were the little red eyesores. Are those are those the the worst jerseys in Blues history? Yes, the red ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, the, the 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 clowns? The no, reverse the, clowns. the red yeah, reverse red reverse retro. retro is the worst. The clowns are the second worst for me. Probably, uh, yeah. The clown blue, the with the red patch at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. The clown. The, the, the I thought the home whites were bad, but not were, as bad as they the weren't. Blue. Yeah, they they were much better than the than the blue and red. That was I. Yeah, the, the whites were fine. If if they if they used a vintage jersey that was the whites, I would not complain would, that much. I'd be like, they oh. were fine for the time, you know. But the the slanted numbers yeah. on the back just were, were terrible. That's that's a bad mm. look. Yep, I agree. But no, I luckily we only have to watch the terrible clown jerseys once this year. And I know there's plenty of people who are fans. And I will say this again: ninety nine percent of the people who are fans of those jerseys. <laughs> Did not watch those jerseys at we, the time. We experienced them. They were born after that. We experienced time. them live and every game. And they grew old quick. David Rawlings, uh, one of the per people we said earlier might be a new listener. He actually said earlier hey. that he's not a new no. live listener, he's just first time commenter. Uh, he says, I moved to St. Louis from California two weeks ago. Excited to be here and go to a blues game this year. David, make sure you stay tuned with us. Uh, we don't have anything in the works yet, but we usually have at least one or two events throughout the year where we, you know, well, we did a live show last year, but we'll usually have some get togethers and watch a blues game together. It used to be at center ice. Clearly that's not the case anymore, uh, but maybe Cardinals nation uh, ballpark village, something like that. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll do something like that. So he's a long time caller. First time listener. Yes. Yes. Of course. <laughs> um, all right. So the last big thing we'll talk about uh, in terms of the Blues, Bally Sports announced its TV schedule. They'll carry 69 regular season games. <laughs> nice. 69, dudes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 13. The 13 remaining games on the schedule will be broadcast on the various NHL national TV channels. Uh, we talked – well, I talked about this a couple weeks ago when they announced the national TV schedule. I just said – you know, normally, I don't know, tell me if, if maybe I was being crazy here, guys. Normally, I'm like, okay, they announced the national TV schedule. The rest of the games are going to be picked up by Bally's, no problem. I was a little concerned this year with them having all their bankruptcy issues. I'm like, they need to release that schedule sooner rather than later because, man, I'm afraid they're not going to pick up, like, all the games just because they're fucking dicks and they're the worst network ever. Did you guys have any fear like that? Um, no, only because I think that's unheard of nowadays. Uh, like yeah. twenty years ago, okay, yeah, there were some. For some reason, there was always a one or two games not televised. 25, 30, 40 years ago, thirty-five years, they, you there'd be a dozen right. games not on TV. So yeah, yep. think about that, yeah. kids. 
uh, oh, yeah. a dozen, and, a dozen, 15 games, not on TV, just scheduled that way. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, at this point, it's that would be a deal breaker. If you cannot broadcast every game that's not picked up nationally, you cannot be our partner. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And that's why probably that's right. why they had to go to the commercial in the middle of the Wainwright ceremony, because <laughs> Valley's got to pay some bills. Oh. Valley's is so bad. Fucking assholes. The, and 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 the yeah. the blues uh, the blues game is televised on Saturday or the is it two o'clock? Which one's on TV? Two or seven? Seven. Uh, seven? or is it both? N- it's the home game. Okay, it's, it's the it's, home it's, game. They're well, only doing. I say televised. O'clock. It's only on the app. Yeah. From what from what the commercial said on TV, it's only on the app. It's two o'clock. Okay, so it's only on mm. the app. It's not actually on the yep. broadcast television station. So yep. yeah, you can stream you can stream that game. Uh let's see, I've got it. Uh yeah, Saturday, September 23rd at two, Tuesday, September 26th versus Columbus, and then Saturday, October 7th versus Chicago. Those are all being streamed on the Valley Sports. Have you app. used their app lately? I have not. Have they fixed yes. it? Yes, uh not lately. Have they fixed it? Not probably because not. last year was god awful. They, they probably don't have the, the manpower to fix that shit. It's awful. I mean, I again, maybe I'm wrong, but all every experience I've had using then, that app, it has been then terrible. stop using, then stop putting shit on it. If it's so yeah. awful and kicks people off, and no one, and it's slow, whatever, choppy, doesn't work. Stop putting shit on that app. It's broadcast. My point on, with on, this uh, is Valley's network TV. And I say this, I even said this back when Fox Sports would, when they were running it, and they were like, oh, yeah, you can stream pre- some preseason games on our app. And I'm like, what are you showing at 2 o'clock on Saturday, September 23rd right. on your normal channel that you can't just put the scoreboard feed up? I think there's a bags tournament like, on uh, that day. Yeah, and probably Cornhole. that is probably Cornhole. what it is. We, I turned it on the other day, and they had beach volleyball, which I was like, okay, that's pretty cool, and I watched it for a little while. Apparently, they were, like, super amateur, well, like, bare, like paid, like, per match. And I'm like, okay, that's not even, like, professionals. It's it. Like, this is just, like, they just brought a camera to, like, uh, fucking Concord Park, and we're just like, oh, yeah, here's uh, here's people playing you, volleyball. You can't tell me that, that <laughs> random beach volleyball coverage from – wherever florida wherever it's coming from that has no ties locally is going to draw more of an audience in st louis than a blues game because the blues draw very well yeah i know Uh, that's my point like whatever you're showing you're telling me you're not going to get more viewers by showing the blues game i I mean obviously uh you know television programming is a ratings driven media like like most like yeah. radio is too. So you you need ratings, and they're gonna typically, unless they have an agreement with a with a with a uh, sports uh, uh, league, right? The to to broadcast all the games, they're gonna put on whatever gets the best ratings if they can. And I, and you know, hockey traditionally doesn't draw as well as other sports, uh, but in St. Louis it does. So that that's kind of puzzling yeah. to me. St. Louis is always in the top three or four in the league as far as like TV ratings goes. So I don't know. I'm not sure. I I don't get it. I, 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 again, I think this is something I say every year when these types of news pieces come out, because I'm just like, what are you showing? Like what's more important than giving the people who, like I literally talked to people today who said they only have cable to watch blues games. And I'm like, so you're telling me that, that that's, you know, there's not, there are plenty of people like that that are just like, I only have cable for blues games. Those are the types of people that are going to be watching your stupid channel when there's a blues preseason game on. So show it. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't complain too much about it because a number of like, what was it? 10, 15 years ago, <clears throat> I would be like, why aren't, why isn't every single blues preseason game televised? Put it on TV, stream it online, something, get it out there. Cause they weren't yeah. doing any. I mean, they might show one, one out of six or whatever it is that on TV. Like, show them all. They do with the Cardinals, most almost all the Cardinal pieces. And, and games. I'm not Just even saying on. they need to, they need to like have broadcasters and play by play. Like, I'm saying you could literally just throw the scoreboard feed up and people yeah. will watch sure. it. Like, that's all you need to do. Or, or easy. You money. And, and if you don't want to, 
put it on your, you know, the Bally Sports station on TV, stream it through the Blues website, uh, or what a YouTube, yep. whatever. It just, I mean, get yep. it out there so people can see it. Um, which again, they weren't before, you know, years ago, but now they're at least it's available in some way, shape, or form more than it was. So I do appreciate yeah. that, but it's still, it's like, it's just like baby steps is like killing me, man. I could come on. Well, and it's, it's still the fact that it's only the home games. Like, come on, you're telling me you can't the feed. talk to Pick the, up someone else's feed. you can't, yeah, you can't talk to the Dallas stars and be like, Hey, can we just tap into your, your, uh, uh, your scoreboard feed or, or, Hey, if you're streaming the game, can we just take your footage and throw it on ours? Especially like, if it's a, I'm sure teams would especially do that. If it's the ballet, especially if they're yeah, all valley ballet station, especially like, my God. I don't know. Yeah, I, it makes I, no I mean, sense to me. I'd love to be in some of these meetings where the executives are making these decisions. I'd be like, uh, the programming directors and things. I'd be like, let me, I'd, I'd love to hear, not that I would like tell them what for. I would just like to hear the explanation as far as why. And I guess it's all ratings, right? I guess it is. But it's just like, yeah, it has I would to love to just hear what the ratings are and, and the comparison and the, and the money difference and the revenue and all that. All that stuff. It'd be just, I'd, be, I'd be interested to see here how that all pans out. Yep. Well, uh, so the season opener in Dallas uh, is uh, going to be on Thursday, October 12th. That will be on Bally's. And then, of course, on Saturday, October 14th at home against Seattle for the home opener. Uh, those are the two first big games. And, of course, anything that's not nationally televised, you can catch on Bally Sports Midwest. Uh, buried. In the uh, yeah. news release for this, and I even messaged you guys. It was like, did you see this? And Kurt, you were like, where the hell are you I seeing yeah. this? Like completely buried, which is crazy to me because to me, this is something Blues fans would be celebrating. So why not even put a freaking social media post out? Joey Vitale and Jamal Mayers have joined the TV studio team. Uh, so they'll be studio analysts for select games on Blues Live pregame and postgame shows. And intermission reports. Uh, that's interesting with me for Joe right. Vitale because you know he's still doing radio. Yeah. So I think it's going to be one of those situations like you guys have probably seen before, where like John Kelly is, you know, he's the MC for you know uh, retirement ceremony or whatever. And then it's like they go to commercial and come back, and you can tell like Darren Pang is like by himself, and he's like, "Yeah, so we're back for break. Uh, we're gonna have puck drop here in a minute." And then it takes a minute. You finally hear John yeah. Kelly pop in like, hey, welcome to Blues Hockey. And it's like, that's probably going to be what it's going to be like for Chris Kerber. He's going to have to be like, well, I don't really have anyone to bounce anything off of because Joey is wrapping up his TV gig. So it's it's interesting that he's doing that. But hey, I love it. I think I, I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about Joey. I, I love Joey. I think he does a great job and brings a lot of energy to the broadcast. I think uh, personally, I think Vitaly is makes a much better would make a much better uh, intermission analyst TV personality <laughs> intermission analyst yeah. than a color guy on the radio. I, 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 I mean, I think he does, he does a fine, he does a fine job on the radio, but I think he, he does better uh, in an analyst role uh, in between uh, like in the studio or like uh, in between periods of intermission and stuff like that. I, I think, I think he's better at that. I mean, he's not bad at the radio. I think he's better at the other personally. Um, you guys ever heard his, I, I forgot the sponsor. It's like the pizza hut halftime report that he does. It's uh, instead of in lieu of the uh, first halftime. commercial break yeah. after the 10 minute mark, oh. the second he, he, um, he does like this little, he'll, you know, talk about something that's going on in the hockey world. And I actually love that. I think he does a great job with it. He's fun. He gets animated. He usually like quips off of Kerber and like I, so I think I agree with you. I think having him in studio, I think he'd be a lot more fun. He'd bring a lot more energy. They they'll definitely need that. And you know, obviously, they had a body to replace with Jamie Rivers, getting promoted to the um, you know in game color analyst role, game in game out. So I'm I'm looking forward to big things, and maybe in a couple of years, Joey's in that seat. Yeah, I I hope so. And hey, Jamal Mayers, I know he was doing some Blackhawks stuff. They've completely reshaped the blood, uh, Blackhawks uh, broadcasting. And I think, honestly, them bringing in Connor Bedard is, is a big reason why um, they want to have a top-notch crew now. So they got rid of idiots like Scott Darling. Um, <laughs> but 
But no, Jamal Mayer, as I did watch him on the block, uh, some of the Blackhawk stuff, and he did a yeah. great job. So I'm actually really excited to see him step in and, and provide some commentary. Yeah, I, I've, I've seen some of Mayer's work in Chicago too, and he does, he's always done a good job. Very professional and very just insight. His insights are good. So. Yeah, and and uh, uh, obviously St. Louis Blue for a long time for, for a while there he was the longest tenured Blue, so he's got got some ties here. I know his family; uh, they they've lived here I think ever since he played here. So although he did um, he did play for Chicago in the old timers, uh, the Winter Classic uh, thing in St. Louis when the Blues and Blackhawks yeah. played for Chicago. I'm like, big, that well, had he worked to be for him because the there was so many at the. Yeah, and it also had to be because the Blues had so many people that wanted to play. Yes, but I was like, I was like, and the Blackhawks have had so many outdoor games. They were I mean, like, Jesus, we can't find guys that want to do it anymore. Mayor's played for them for what <laughs> was it? One season, two seasons, and then, but he, so. he worked yeah. for them in the broadcasting. So, I, yeah, yeah, and then that, that kind of I was like, hey, you're playing for the Hawks. You played for us for five hundred years. <laughs> yep. Uh, so one of my, and, and as we close up here, guys, uh, so any comments, uh, anybody listening, you want to add, let's get them in now because we are closing up shop here. But one of my ex- most exciting things that I love about the off season, and this is going to sound so stupid and it's probably means for somebody who works on the internet. Um, every year we have this section in our outlines that says next up for the blues. And when the summer hits, I cross that out. So I make sure to not mention it. My one of my favorite things in the off season is when I get to take, I get to highlight that and then unstrike through <laughs> it, and that way it's like that means there is fucking Blues hockey, like it's finally here. Uh, so next up for the Blues, split squad games against Arizona to open the preseason, 2 p.m. in Arizona, 7 p.m. in St. Louis, uh, and then of course Tuesday versus Columbus at seven o'clock. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about this before the show, but I know Kurt, you had mentioned. Uh, you are interested in doing a show next week. I am going to be out of town all week, um, so I will not be available. But I don't know how much you guys are going to be breaking down preseason, but at least you will have some preseason hockey to discuss next I'm week. I'm sure we'll find something to talk about. And if we can't yeah. find any preseason, preseason hockey to talk about, maybe we just, you know... Break the rules and talk about the allegations that have kept <laughs> Austin out. All right, now, uh, hold on. Is he legally allowed to talk about the allegations? He isn't, but we are. He may not be able to. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I'm i actually going to be, uh, when this sh- if you guys do a show Wednesday, um, I will be in uh, Las Vegas at the Sprint Center watching the Kings and Golden Knights. I like to call it Lost uh, Wages. So that- oh, it'll definitely be Lost Wages for me. Um, but tell you what, if I win a lot of money, I will buy... Let's go blues.com from you. And we are just going to okay. like have a huge right. show blowout. We'll pay everybody to listen. <laughs> like it's going to be great. Just give away money. Uh, for <laughs> listeners. The $500 yeah, uh, halftime bu- giveaway. I'm going to buy you both out. I'm going to have uh Steven ground and Mike Meyer take okay. your spot. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll sell it to you and I'll go, I'll go uh, move to Florida and play pickleball. Retire. There you, there you go. That's all you need in life. <laughs> um, no, I'm looking forward to that. So I will not be here next week. But uh, man, I love the fact that when I let's see, when I come back, I guess we'll have two Florida. shows. Thank we'll you. have a regular show, and then we'll have our season recap or season preview <laughs> season show recap. Uh, because that'll be <laughs> yeah. The funeral. The blues were so starts. bad. We're already recapping. How bad it. were they? <laughs> Uh, no, we'll have our season preview show. I believe that's we're we're got it slated right now for the 13th, which is the day before the Blues open the season in Perfect. Dallas. So, Perfect. looking forward to that. Yep, 100. percent We do have one more story that I wanted to mention very quickly. I did forget we do have because this is something else I have to uh, unstrike through. Um, rapid fire tidbits from around the NHL. There was a big story out of the NHL recently, and it's kind of funny. Uh, Mike Babcock. Uh, no, not Michael Babcock, the new Blues assistant coach. Mike Babcock, his father, uh, resigned as the Columbus Blue Jackets head coach before he even coached a game. Uh, the reasoning was he was hired back in, what, July, I believe. Um, reason was he was asking for personal photos from players in a bonding effort that drew criticism as too invasive. Uh, the NHLPA conducted an investiga- investigation amid the revelations of these actions 
This was actually brought forth by uh, Paul Bissonette, uh, currently of Spit and Chicklets and TNT coverage. Um, he basically called this out. And I know Boone Jenner came out and said, no, 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 it was fine. It was no big deal. But well, I think these... You know why uh, Boone Jenner's name... You know why Boone Jenner came out? Because Bissonette mentioned his name. And yeah. and oh. that was something that Bissonette apologized for about doing because he should not have outed his source <laughs> no that was not. bad that I was agree. really bad yeah that's 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 still the learning curve i think from nhl player to reporter like yeah. you can't you cannot out your sources like that. columbus you know what uh i have no sympathy for columbus whatsoever because they knew who mike babcock Bab, yeah, mike babcock was when they hired him and then he goes and does something that is like very Mike Babcock like, and they mm-hmm. fire and they fire him. You, to me, uh, Yarmo should maybe lose his job over this. Or I mean, I agree. because this is they they knew who he was, and they and they hired him anyway. And then he does something like this, and they fire him. You look stupid. You look really. It's embarrassing. And I don't know what they were expecting. This was bound to happen. And it and I. To be honest, I, I'm kind of shocked it happened as quick as it did, but uh, yeah, it was. I thought he would at least get. I thought he. Would, I thought he at least get the Barry Melrose treatment. He, and, you know, like nine games. And he didn't apologize <laughs> either when he his statement he released and what he said. No apology. He didn't say he shouldn't have done it. He just said that it was it would be too much of a distraction for him to be coach. That's what he said. I'm like, yeah. fuck yep. you. You're an asshole, and you you, you I mean. <sighs> You can't demand to see players' phones and put them up on a screen and go over their photo yeah. history to learn more about them. What a fucking asshole! It's just a, you, there are all think, a lot better ways to go about getting to know somebody than to take their phone and go through their photo reel. I think because from the way I understand it, it was it's like, terrible. "Give me your phone. We're going to project this on a screen right yeah. this minute." I think if it was like, "Hey, send get a picture me some of your photos. family." Yeah, send me a photo of your family, and I'll put like a collage in the locker room of everyone with their families. I think that kind of thing would have been fine. But the fact that he, the way he approached it, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, again, like this isn't, uh, so Pascal Vincent is his replacement. If this was Pascal Vincent doing it, I think it's like a, oh my God, honest mistake. I'm so sorry. But like, it's fucking Mike Babcock. <laughs> like we all know who Mike Bob Babcock is. We know the shit he's done to players in the past. So many stories have come out. You have got to tiptoe when you enter preseason, when you enter training camp. You have got to come in so light and be like, okay, this is my serious last chance. I've got to do the right thing here. You didn't do the right thing, Mike Bob Mike Babcock. What the hell are you thinking? Babcock's an asshole. He's just an yeah. asshole. And that's all it is all just doing. Yeah. And to you know, to your point about Yarmo losing his job, I think it's time for regime change in Columbus. Like yeah. they've they've been there for what seven, seven, eight years at this point. And uh, you know, they've their high water marks are bringing in Johnny Goudreau and um um Patrick Line, right? And um not getting the first overall pick when it was Connor Bedard. So I, I I think that yeah it's it's probably time for a, a total turnover in Columbus, um, especially if their on ice product is uh, you know subpar as usual. This Man, is this is a this is a David Miner brought up. You know, Mike Babcock makes Mike Keenan look like a saint. Who was the more controversial coach? I mean, I think in terms of just personal. And obviously, recent stories come to mind, but personal invasion, it's got to be Babcock, not just with this recent story, but the whole like, you know, list to me players one through 18, who is the hardest working player to who is the least hardest working player. Like, that is so invasive that it's like, dude, you are literally all you're doing is driving a stake in the middle of this locker room. Mike Keenan was just a fucking dick. Well, I think he was just, from what we've heard, it was a, this guy just yelled at me and screamed at me, told me I was worthless. Well, what did Babcock? Maybe there was more to it than we've heard. What did Babcock do to Franzen? He 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 made him have like a mental breakdown. 
he ruined Franzen's life <laughs> outside of hockey. Oh, Chris Chelios shared oh, some, yeah. some more stories. That winter classic story that, about the shit the he winter did. Classic story yeah. where he he benched him and then tried to get him one shift into the game, and he's like, "No, fuck you, I'm not going on the ice." He benched him yeah. during the winter classic. He turns to his and his kid like taps in the glass, like in the second period. He's like, "What's going on? You're not playing." And he goes, "I don't know. I don't know what's going on." Yep. Asshole. I, just an absolute dickhead. Yeah, he's an asshole. And yep. and, and that's I, uh, and that's both no, of them. That's I mean, that'd be that's a nice little poll, you know, to do. Who's the who's the uh, more controversial? Who's the, who's the bigger, bigger asshole? Yeah, uh, Babcock or Keenan? Yeah. Uh, David Miner adds, Keenan wasn't stupid, just an asshole. Babcock was an asshole and an idiot. I don't, I don't want to say Babcock's an idiot. I think he just, I think there's a difference. I don't think he's an idiot. I think he doesn't think. He doesn't fully think what his actions are going to but, do. I say the same thing to my <laughs> nephew who's 15. Like, you're not an idiot. You just need to think things yeah. through. And I don't think Babcock well, Babcock, dude, Babcock does had that. three and a half years to think things through. He, when he was, when he, Got was fired from Toronto. He he said he took that time to reflect and and uh, try to learn how to get to know players better. And what does he do right out of the shoot <laughs> in Columbus? Yep. Is he fucking does this? It's just like he's. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think there he he may not be too. I mean, he may have a good hockey mind, I guess, but he's he might not be as bright as some people think he is. Some uh, somebody asked me recently. Um, with this coming out with Babcock and, and him already kind of losing his second chance. Um, what does that mean for Joel Quinville? Does, do you think a team will say the, like, look at this now and say, somebody gave Babcock well, a second chance. We were considering giving Quinville a second chance. What, now we're not. Cause look what bad. Wasn't the did. rumor that th- there were rumblings that they were going to revisit the Quinville situation to see if he would, if they would allow him to coach again. No, they have. They have. Uh, they did. They, they, so both okay. uh, Stan Bowman and Quenville, um, the, the league's looked at it. And I think if somebody offers them a job, the league's not going to stop it. Okay. But at this so, point, which is ridiculous. Yeah, so, at this point, I think after the Babcock situation, Quenville, if he hadn't already done it, is got to have a like, you know, how to relate to, uh, you know, millennials. Uh, kind of coach, right? And some kind of PR coaching before he gets into this. So, you know, it doesn't wind up in this kind of situation. Although you know, his problem was, you know, just win at all costs. And, you know, who cares if, you well, know, we had a rapist. See, well, and, and from what I've heard, Quinville was, is liked, like most players right. say, like playing for Joel Quinville was incredible, right. but it's it's a it's the odd situation where you need to put coaching aside and be a good person. It's funny that he didn't do. How are you going to measure that when you hire someone like Quinville? It's funny because Quinville probably has done the worst thing out of any coach that we talked about it is covering up a rape, right? That uh, of, of a of a player. By by not, not only by covering up a rape but guy not only covering up a rape, but also letting sending him off and letting him go work with yes. His children. Yes. And I mean Unbelievable. that to me that is it is it is head and shoulders easily worse than anything Babcock or Keenan ever did. Uh 100%. it's not even close. Um so yeah, I, I mean God help the team that if it ever happens that offers Quimble a job. And and he takes it because there's gonna be that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> just just the idea of it. Even if he even if Quinville, you know, straight as an arrow the rest of the way, you know, and does and is a, is a good coach. It, there's always gonna be that thing with him, and it's gonna be a shit storm, uh, at least for a while, um, if he gets hired somewhere. Boy, David Miner, I hope this is not the case. He says, to be honest, the team to give Quinville another chance is no. us. Um, if the blues hire Joel Quinville, I may need to take a leave of absence from the show. Like, I, I don't think I can talk about the blues. I, I hope not. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Before the whole Kyle beach thing came about, I was like, and, and when, uh, uh, yo was fired and Ruby was the interim. I was like, oh, I was all, like, bring Quinville back, yeah, we Quim, all, bring uh-huh. him back, bring it back. Yeah. But yeah, I dodged a bullet there, I guess, you know? 
Yeah, we did. Yeah, th- think about that because he would have been coaching the Blues at the time, mm-hmm. and you know those allegations come out. There's no, I mean, wh- wh- who did Florida even hire after he left? Um, <sighs> who was it? Is it their current coach? Did they have an interim? No, they, have, they, they had an interim, so. didn't they? They, I think they. Although did. It, was before, it was before um, the season started. This, this is where we need a producer, Austin. Damn you and your allegations, <laughs> Austin. Whatever. It doesn't. Um, Either way. Yeah. I. Uh, well, anyway, I. Um, no, I, oh, I. I couldn't even imagine. And yeah, if if he were to be hired by the Blues, in any capacity. Um, no. Well, I, I. I'm so sickened by what he did that I. I don't know if I could even sit here and talk about the Blues. See, anymore. I. I would, but I, I'd use it as an opportunity to condemn it every chance I got. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's the way I'd approach it. Uh, David Miner, uh, Andrew Burnett. Yeah, their current coach. Yeah, it was yeah. Burnett that took over. So, yeah. it's worked out for them, sure. clearly. But still. Um, this, this isn't a relative here, is it, Bill? Jeremy Day? Possibly. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, he says, what do you guys think about the hockey guy, Shannon? Is he fair and accurate? I will be honest. I am a bad hockey fan. I've never watched the YouTube. Hockey guy. The, that's the Not YouTube once. one, right? It's a, his name's Shannon. Yeah, and he's it's always posted on Reddit. Oh, okay, I, I've watched him a fair amount. Um, <laughs> what do you think? I think his who's his team? Is it Toronto? Toronto, I think Toronto. Um, I you know I I I think he's very matter of fact. I think he does his research. I think he knows his stuff. I think he's, I think for the most part, he's fair. Um, I have no, I have no problem with him. He has a huge following. I do not like the sleeveless hockey things that he wears <laughs> because they sponsor him. Oh, you know, those, 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 okay. ho- the hockey jerseys without the sleeves. They're just, they're, they're tanked. Oh yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. wears, they sponsor him and he wears those once in a while. And I'm like, ah, eh, I don't mm-hmm. like those things. Yeah, see, I I don't know. I'm I was just confused because I thought that was a trademark of uh, one Jeff Gordon of the St. Louis Post Dispatch, the These. hockey guy. Oh right, yeah, yeah, the, the most yeah, unhockey not, of guys, not. right? <laughs> Jeff Gordon. <laughs> yeah, um, and, no comment about Jeff Gordon. I've I've talked about him plenty on this show. By the way, I'm an idiot. I don't know what I was thinking. Florida Panthers, their head coach is Paul Maurice. Right. Uh, they, Burnett, Burnett was yeah. he was their interim guy, and now he's with Nashville, as David Miner points yeah. out. Thank you. My bad. I the minute I said that, it like in my head I go, wait, Paul Maurice. And I'm like, no, you're being dumb. And then David posts that. I'm like, yeah, actually, yeah, it is Paul Maurice. Yeah. We're all in preseason form still. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we're getting there. Don't worry, guys. By midseason, we will know half of the uh the hockey so, question scenario for you. <laughs> Let's say Brubig is fired halfway through the season because the team is in the tank and they do hire Quinville and he takes him to a cup. How are, how are your emotions with the whole thing? <laughs> I don't want to think about that. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a cornucopia of uh, stuff. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's one of those things. It's like, yay. That's, you. that's what you start a show where we have nothing to talk about. Right. With, right. Yeah. Not, not at two hours. <laughs> that, that's what you guys could start with yeah. next week. How about there you that? Go. The, the what, yeah. what if? Well, you're, gonna, you're gonna have a whole what well, if. Show. What if show. Yeah. What if show. What if with the wild crats, right? <laughs> that, dude, that is not a bad idea to have a what if segment. And like, look back at a moment in Blues history. What like, what if this didn't happen? What if something changed? What if Wayne Gretzky didn't turn the puck over? Uh, what if he hadn't had it and lost it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Gretzky hadn't lost it. Oh, that should be part of the intro. Just, just that little sound bit as part of the uh, of the intro. Gretzky had it, lost it, and then go something else. <laughs> oh. I'll make me sad. Oh, before that, we go on I, and I've said it before that that <laughs> that goal messed me up for a long long time and i did not fully like move past it until the cup uh, that 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 yeah mm. well go on to my youtube channel folks there's a uh there's a video a reaction video of me um i had not watched the jonathan taves yeah. overtime goal on ryan miller uh in was that game five <sighs> yeah game five uh the one that uh, was a breakaway it was a no look throw out pass from keith 
didn't even know Taves was there. And uh, he came in and scored. I was at that game sitting five rows from the ice. The minute the pass went up to center and Taves was there, I literally put my hands over my eyes and I'm like, I'm not going to watch. And I, my wife's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, nope, not going to watch because I knew what was going to happen. It wasn't until after the Blues won the Cup. It was that summer that I was finally like, you know what? I'll watch that goal finally. I had never seen it before. <clears throat> so that's how I react to tough moments with, with Blues I have history. so many. Like, I don't even want to watch them. I have so many thoughts on that that goal. You know, it's like, I think people Ugh. like to rip Miller on it, but I'm like, I don't know. I mean, Tays had the width, the space, the width of a puck to slide it in, and he got it. You know, it was like, yep. I mean, I, it was a hell of a move. And he waited as long as he possibly could well, and, and just and slid he it in had there. All the all the time in the world. I don't like, think Miller played it there that was, bad. All the blues were like still in the neutral yeah. zone by the time he was like, you know, at the hash marks. Yeah. Like it was nuts how much time he had. I just I, I didn't think Miller played it that bad. People, but it was a nice move by Taze. He tip your cap. Just a shitty, yep. shitty fucking thing. Yep. Just a unfortunate play. All right. <clears throat> Well, we are, uh, I think we're at time. Anything you guys want to add before we close up? Uh, Jeremy Day, which is something we covered, he said that, are you guys going to miss Panger on the broadcast? Uh, are you mad he went to Chicago? I think we covered that, but uh, yeah, a couple of shows ago. But uh, I think of our not really, thoughts. I mean, not yeah. really going to miss him on the broadcast because I think he, I think it was maybe time for some a change. Um, but uh, Maddie went to Chicago, not really. Yeah, he's he played mean, there. I don't That's care about opinion. that. Played there. He's winding up back where where his NHL career started. So yeah, I'm not gonna. And he's right. He's gonna bring an energy that they haven't had. And like you said, get those clowns out of the booth. But yeah, and he's he's gonna be able to call one of the greatest players of our generation. Yeah, uh, he's gonna be able to call every one of his goals for the most part. So I, I, you know, at most, I'm I'm excited for him to be able to do that. Say what you want about you know uh chicago but there's a there's a lot for chicago fans to be excited about even though they, they may not be a good team this year um they've got a lot of fun stuff to look forward to this year you know so yep. oh, holy they're gonna jumping <laughs> they're gonna get good at the deadline not good but they're gonna have some good draft picks i think coming in they got they brought in a lot of guys that i think they're gonna be moving right at the deadline uh, to playoff teams and getting more draft picks. So they're going to be good in a couple years. So let's hope the blues can get another cup before that happens. Or um, just uh, have Cairo and uh, Thomas uh, uh, bump up their development and become these elite players that we all want them to be. And then uh, we can go head to head with the Hawks. So yeah, we need to get, um, Oh, good up. Uh, ugh, I'm thinking of gaming terms. Like when you um, upgrade your player, uh, Ah, it's all it's not coming to me. Damn Price it, that would have been a funny joke, but now I'm just an yeah. idiot. I, I I'm rooting for Chicago to be good because and, and us too, because that is the best when we're both fighting for the division. It's a it's a blast. So I agree. We shall see. Well, all right. I think that'll uh uh I think that'll do it for the show. Uh gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Support for Let's Go Blues Radio is brought to you in part by ID Life the world's only truly personalized vitamin platform based on a health assessment of your DNA. Visit rocketnetidlife.com for more information. That's rocketnetidlife.com and get 10% off by emailing Dustin at rocketnetidlife at gmail.com and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you. And by Mike Burgoyne from Real Brokerage Realty. Visit strikewithmike.com today for all of your home buying and selling needs. That's strikewithmike.com. And by Center Ice Brewery, St. Louis's tasty hockey-themed beer. Check out your local beer vendors for availability. That's Center Ice Brewery beer. Please drink responsibly. Uh, that will wrap up episode 12. I'm sorry, episode 20 of season 12 of the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Let's go Blues Radio. Thanks for listening. And thanks to those who participated in the YouTube and Facebook live chats during the live show. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. For Bill Day, Kurt Price, and the absent producer, Austin, I'm Jeff Ponder, and this was Let's Go Blues Radio. Until next time, everyone, and we can say this, and it actually means something, let's go blues. Let's go blues. Let's go allegations. So many allegations. So many.
Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. <laughs> you thought I was going to say a son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs>